conservation structure. Um, I've uh, sent comments into the Daily News and the LA Times. I was, uh, I run the Southern California Watershed Alliance. I was once elected to the uh, Casitas Municipal Water District during the long drought. So I went through this process um, before and I understand that this is actually what's been on the books in LA through back through that six year drought when we dealt with these issues. Yesterday, the Metropolitan Water District went for a 20% increase on top of last year's 14 and a 10% allocation drop. I work on statewide policy issues and um, even though I'm working hard to deal with my mother's um, perennial uh, English garden in the San Fernando Valley and uh, fixing the leaks and uh, trying to cut back on our water usage there, I see the value of this in giving people a, um, a signal in terms of the rates and getting them to conserve and that those that would use the least would actually benefit from this. And I encourage DWP to allow people to know that they have in place a program for a landscape meter, which, would, which we've installed, which would help people in the San Fernando Valley um, to separate their outdoor and indoor usage. And um, I'm also uh, encouraged that we uh, maintain what uh, not all water agencies have here, which is a uh, low income or lifeline rate. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Williams, mm -hmm. not plugged in. Hello, hello. Okay. Okay. Can you, go ahead. It's fine. Okay. You can hear uh, me. Dr. Clyde Williams, 4115 Barrett Road, El Sereno. Uh, yes, we're in a snow drought. Actually, I think it's going to get far worse than most people expect. And that, say, over the next three to five years, what happens if there's no snow? in the mountains of the Sierra and the Rocky Mountains. We have studied that before in Berkeley a long time ago, and it's not pleasant. Say 20 inches of rain. You don't have enough dams. You don't have enough ways of getting the water into the ground. However, LA has the Hyperion sewage treatment plant. It's been generating a lot of good water for a long time and dumping it in the ocean. That's the same water that came across the Tehachapi's. In other areas, even Orange County has been using recycled water for over 30 years. We did a study in Monterey Bay. Yes, you can easily use well-treated sewage water. In the central United States where I grew up, Kansas, we used the water five times before we discharged it, and then the people down in New Orleans had to use it again. Same water. So there is water available. DWP has failed to use the available water within the basin. Other people have been using it for a long time, and it is well-known technology. Singapore right now is using pipe-to-pipe -pipe recycled water going directly into the potable system. Eventually, we will have to do the same thing, and it's a lot cheaper than paying MWD. Uh, Long Beach figured out that we had a drought two years ago. What happened to DWP? DWP, the biggest publicly owned utility service in the United States. And boom, they didn't anticipate this. Neighborhood councils were concerned about it. We had an MOU, but the practical application of the MOU with DWP has been a tragic loss. Thank, Thank you, Dr. You. Williams. Uh, next uh, public comment speaker is Nina Royale. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you. Uh, I represent the Sunland Tahunga Neighborhood Council. I'm the outreach uh, vice president. And we do not believe this is vetted enough in the neighborhood councils. Getting a, a week's delay isn't enough. We had a meeting uh, last week, but there was no time to put this on the agenda. So I'm asking you to please extend the time uh, because there is so much at risk here, particularly with people that have uh, larger than two acre plots. Um, I want to mention too that I've been a member of the Integrated Resource Planning Committee for 
uh, about five years. We knew there was going to be a drought. We talked about it, and yet I don't see departments talking to one another. When it comes to major developments, uh, housing projects, there's nothing being done to um, reclaim the water. And when developers come, I'm also a member of the Land Use Committee, when developers come to our committees and I ask them about permeable material, what, what are they doing to recycle the water that they're using, and they all look at me like I'm a crazy person. I know they're sick of hearing me. Okay. Even my own neighborhood council, I, I'm always bringing this up. And nothing's being done. So meanwhile, you're going to penalize people for using the water, but you're doing nothing for new developments coming in to conserve water. So please take this into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I uh, just want to clarify. We're going to have to get into the agenda now. Um, Miguel Luna and Stephanie Taylor, are you here for no no? Are you here for public comment or are you here for the item on the agenda? The item on the agenda. Okay. All right. So that's item. All right. There that's great. All right. Um, why don't we get started on the agenda? This is the Energy and Environment Committee special meeting Wednesday, the fifteenth of April. And it is officially, I think, about, well, I can't see the clock right now. 925. 925. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I would like for the department uh, to come forth. Um, last week, we started a discussion on shortage year water rates uh, designed to encourage water conservation through price signals contained in the proposed rate structure and a pricing structure uh, which we rely upon uh, when faced with severe drought conditions. Now, just to get this conversation started, the 15% increase acknowledges the three-year drought that we have experienced and the gover governor's call to the state of emergency. Uh, last year, the council did approve a water rate ordinance that would allow the department to increase water rates in the event of a drought. This action is subsequent to the adoption of the ordinance, and we are, in fact, right now in an emergency drought situation which allows the department to adjust the rates accordingly. For this reason, uh, we have been advised by the city attorney that the rate change does not breach the memorandum of understanding with neighborhood councils as the ordinance was discussed thoroughly with neighborhood councils at its inception. So now I would like to ask the department to explain the direct impact the rate payers may feel. Uh, the response to the drought also creates an incentive to conserve more water so that ratepayers do not feel an increase in their water bills. Um, and then just second point, and then I'm going to stop and let the department speak. Uh, second item we're going to be hearing today is the implementation of the Phase 3 Water Conservation Plan Ordinance. I hope we have enough time. While this is a separate issue, and I want to make that clear, these items will be running on parallel tracks to help us conserve water. The water conservation phase restricts landscape irrigation to two days per week. It maintains the restrictions imposed in the first two phases. And there are six phases in this plan, with each one being more conservative and more restrictive. So I'll ask DWP to elaborate on both of those topics. So David, if you would please. Mr. Um, Nahai. I'd be happy to. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair Perry. Uh, good morning, Council President Garcetti. Uh, 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 Council Member uh, Gruel, um, and uh, thank you for allowing us to appear here before you. My name is David Nahai, and I'm privileged to serve as the CEO and General Manager of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Um, as you uh, uh, noted, uh, uh, Chair Perry, uh, the matter before you is, is not new. Uh, the, uh, the shortage year rates measure uh, uh, has been before this committee before, was before City Council, was sent back to the Board of Water and Power Commissioners, and it was readopted by the Water, Board of Water and Power Commissioners uh, yesterday. Uh, the measure arises out of an ordinance that was approved by the Board on October, in October of 2007. It was reaffirmed uh, by resolution in February of 2008. The Los Angeles City Council subsequently approved the ordinance uh, in March of 2008, and it became effective in June of 2008. Um, the ordinance, in effect, reaffirmed the concept of shortage year rates and, uh, and enabled this measure to, to go forward. The shortage year rates structure or concept itself is also not new. Uh, this was uh, a, a device, for want of a better word, that was devised back in the very early 90s in order to conserve, um, uh, in order to induce, I should say, water conservation 
precisely in times of, uh, of, uh, of severe drought, uh, which is what we're facing at this time. It is not just a snow drought, it is also a regulatory drought, and any doubts uh, about this issue were surely put to bed yesterday when the Metropolitan Water District um, uh, uh, adopted uh, what uh, amounts to mandatory rationing, um, ordering its uh, member agencies to cut back water use by at least 10%. Uh, 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 so this is, this is a matter that we, that we really have no uh, choice in. Uh, the concept of the shorter geo rates, to elaborate just a little bit, is not a revenue enhancement measure. It, it, it is revenue neutral. And, uh, and what it does is that it constrains the, the higher tier of tier one. It lowers it by 15%. Thus, in effect, asking those who are at the very uh, uh, upper limits of tier one to reduce by 15%. Those who are already conserving by 15% will see no effect. Those who conserve even more below the 15% threshold will see their DWP bills go down. Those who do not are going to see a fiscal uh, effect as a result of it. Um, in, terms of, in terms of outreach, uh, we held a, uh, a workshop with the neighborhood councils on March 14th. There's another workshop that's going to be held this Saturday, April 18th, in order to again... What was the one March 14th held? It was at, uh, at the John Ferrara building. And then on the next one will be it, it will be in the in the same place. <coughs> what was your turnout on the 14th? How did you, how'd you do? I don't remember how many what the number was that we had. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. A couple, couple dozen maybe. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe 20. And uh, again, you know, since this is a recurrent issue, tell me how you, how'd you do your outreach so you can do better on the upcoming one. Well, there's there's an email blast that goes out to oh, the, the neighborhood council. councils. Yeah, I think. I think in connection with the, with the one that is being held this Saturday, I think Public Affairs told me that they'd sent, sent out 1,800 emails. Okay. Uh, it's posted on the website. We do our, our utmost to, to, to publicize it. Uh, uh, some of the people who, were, who appeared at, um, uh, at the board yesterday, for instance, didn't attend the workshop, uh, although they, they these are people who normally do and are, and are very, very interested in DWP matters. Yeah. But in addition to that, we'll be sending out a ro rate notification letter. Uh, we're we're going to send out a standalone bill insert. There'll be a, uh, a particular letter which will, will go to low-income customers uh, come uh, uh, people <coughs> right now by just by calling uh, the, the call center. We'll be able to determine uh, what their tier one limit is, what they can do to cut back. On May 1, they'll be able to do that just by a visit to ladwp.com. Uh, uh, there are going to be print materials that will go out, um, uh, uh, additional informational materials. There'll be print advertising, radio advertising. We're going to do our level best to make sure that, uh, that, that everybody knows about this, again, because the idea isn't to have people pay more money. The idea is to get them to conserve. If that doesn't happen, we will all have to pay more money. And as part of your media outreach, will you be reaching out to multifamily tenants and property managers, things like that? Yes. This was, this was one of the issues that a number of council members expressed concern over. I think, uh, I think the concern is, is well placed. And we must work with, uh, with apartment owners in order, to, in order to make them better understand what the impact of this is and, uh, and what their relationship is going to be with their tenants. Many apartment owners uh, are, are concerned that, that they are paying the water bills and they believe the message of conservation isn't getting through to their tenants. And if you'd like some more explanation of what we're going to do and how those relationships work, um, I know that uh, David Hotchkiss is here to talk about the legal side of things, but do you want to address some of the issues regarding landlord-tenant relationships, Jim? Why don't you just give us a couple of minutes on that? Okay. Um, the, 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 rate, the rate ordinance does um, contain a provision that allows uh, landlords to allocate uh, the, the cost of water or allocate the water bill amongst their tenants. And, and uh, uh, the requirements are that uh, the allocation formula has to be uh, fair, it has to be transparent, it has to be communicated to the tenants, and it has to be subject to the the review of the of the Department of Water and Power to make sure that it's that it's that's fair. The fact of the matter is, uh, most uh, landlords don't go through that 
allocation formula because it's it's you know it's a little bit involved and uh, it's limited the amount of money that they can recover on that is limited to the, the total water bill so they're not allowed to mark up the the water bill to cover the cost of administration on something like that so most most landlords do not take advantage of that but for those that do um, and and if they incur uh, higher uh, tier uh, two uh, costs those would be uh, allocated according to the methodology they've adopted amongst their tenants okay another quick question uh, and the, the the status of the MWD proposal to implement water rationing to its members a, member agencies now I, I'd like for you to explain how the city's water shortage rate proposal will assist in meeting the demands of MWD's water rationing action. Go ahead and cover that. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, my name is Jim McDaniel. I'm the Assistant General Manager uh, at DWP in charge of the water system. The, the Metropolitan Water District uh, yesterday at their board uh, did approve a, a 10 percent allocation reduction uh, across the board um, for their member agencies. Uh, one of the things that uh, we were successful in negotiating in that formula is credits for conservation that we've done and also uh, partial credit for some of the, the loss of local supply. And what that means is our Eastern Sierra supplies are down, so that gets calculated in, into the formula. But you add all that up and you add up the fact that our Eastern Sierra supplies are only about 70 percent of average, uh, our groundwater production is down due to uh, groundwater contamination issues, although we're working to address that, hope to have some of that uh, production capacity restored this summer. But uh, all these things added together uh, mean that there's going to be uh, less supply available than normal demand. So we need to, we need to reduce demand. Uh, the rate ordinance in the City of Los Angeles provides us with two primary tools to reduce demand. One of them is the emergency ordinance, which uh, it was going to be uh, discussed, I guess, uh, also today. And then the second tool is the shortage year rates, which is uh, the topic of the conversation now. Great. Um, two quick things, and then I'm going to ask my colleagues to put their uh, questions and comments on the record. Uh, this is for Mr. Uh, Nahai. I think uh, during council last week, I uh, was very interested in requesting, um, and I said so on the record, that the water rates ordinance be amended. Uh, so in the future to permit the council more time to review future water shortage rate proposals would the department be supportive supportive of amending language that would change the 15 days to 30 days yes the department would and it came up yesterday at uh, at the board of commissioners meeting and I would support that I I, I see that yeah. this 15 day time limit causes too much pandemonium it, it does and yeah. it's yeah all right, then, then I'll make a re I'll make a request to the city attorney. No, it's it it can't be done as part of this ordinance. I think I think as part of this item, but in the future, I think you were referring to. That's what I said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. I, no, I, see, I, I know what I said. It's I good. see my my legal brethren going into no, a bit I know, of a I panic. Saw, so. I, I know. That's what I I think I said to be amended so in the future. Okay, so we don't have to go through this again. You did. Okay. Could I address that issue? This is David Hodgkins, assistant city. Attorney. Yeah. The, the ordinance is written makes it a minimum of 15 days, I understand. not a maximum. So it, it would be a simple thing for the board to simply adopt a policy to grant more time than 15 days and it wouldn't even require a modification. All right, well, I'm going to request that the city attorney prepare language that would reflect what I've just said. I, I think okay. that uh, maybe it's right clarifying right. language, maybe it's something like that, but I'm going to request that and then we'll bring it back to committee and then it'll be really straightforward. Our proposal would simply be that it be a matter of policy of the board and okay. resolution that it be a minimum of 30 days. Okay, so, right. and then you, obviously you'll prepare that and we'll go back yeah. to that process. But yeah. can okay. I just add something on yeah. your item there, uh -huh. Ms. Perry? Yes. That, uh, but that would mean that if it's just a policy of the board, no disrespect to the board, but they could change their policy at any time. If it's an ordinance, it's a different situation. It's legally binding. What I'm going to do is ask you to prepare an amendment that reflects what I just said, which may be clarifying language. Right. It may be that. I want to see what you're going to draft, and I hope that it will reflect what I just asked for. Yeah. Right. So we'll see. I, I, have, I have no we'll misunderstanding we'll about what you asked for. Yeah, 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 I'm going to do that too. Okay, so everybody's kind of hyper today. Uh, that uh, I want to know, uh, Mr. Nahai, if you, uh, the department, would support 
uh, the council and committee getting quarterly reports back from the Department of Water and Power on the status of the drought and the need to continue or to modify or to terminate water shortage rates. Is that something that the department can support? Uh, uh, with great pleasure. All right, and then at the end of all of this, and we'll go back through and make the um, amending language and the motions and instructions and request to the city attorney and all that. So we'll go through it one more time. Okay, Mr. Garcetti, and then uh, Ms. Grohl. Building on the hyperactivity, I'm gonna speak very quickly. Very good, uh, like Excuse that. me to, to everybody, I know uh, we have a, a full agenda downstairs as well. Um, as I've said here many times, my goal for the department um, is, you know, as it relates to water in the city, is quality and, and, con and conservation, but also transparency. Um, we know that our water is clean. Thank you to the good work of our men and women at the department, and we're working to conserve. And I, I do take issue that, you know, where the DWP has been, and, you know, in terms of piling onto the D DWP, when there's time to do that, there's time to do that, and we've done that. I also think that in water conservation, um, this council and the department have worked together on a number of things. The landscape ordinance revisions for drought tolerant plants uh, a few years ago, green building ordinance that emphasizes points for water conservation, waterless urinals moving forward, um, wetlands in places like South Los Angeles that are reintegrating water, uh, our green streets program, which are unpaving streets throughout the city, our Proposition O project, uh, long before we were all here as council members, obviously low flow, flow toilets and appliances were nationwide leaders. It was a real model. Um, for a department to do that. Um, and, you know, the last time toilet to tap was suggested or, or recycling, it became toilet to tap from some of the same opponents who are now uh, saying, uh, don't do this, do something like that. Not you, Dr. Williams, but um, it is important to make sure that that history is very clear. Um, let's be absolutely clear about what we're doing here, though, today. This drought is different than any that we've seen before. This is not a new discussion of rate tiering. It is the first implementation of a declaration of drought after a year and a half of discussion and successful passage, passing of the rate tiering, in which many people were informed about that as well. Um, it was articulated by the department. We're in our third year of drought. We have this today from the California section of the 10% cut um, further on top of everything since last week. And addition, additionally, because of the unprecedented efforts by this uh, chair, mayor, council, the department, a huge chunk of supplies from past years are no longer there. And this is a good thing. It costs us more, but we've been living cheaply off the back of all sorts of ecosystems in the Owen Valley and other places that have been depleted because of the, the lifestyle here in Los Angeles, which we've all acknowledged is a wrong in the past and that we have to make right. This ordinance is an important part of the overall efforts to conserve water. My focus has been how do we make this process better. It's also a complicated ordinance that needs to be broken down and simply explained to rate payers. Um, the amount of water that any customer can use is determined by the family size, the area of the city, and lot size. So people are understandably very confused, which is why we pulled this back in order to be able to have that time. I don't want to miss the summer, though, as I said also very clearly in council, because I think if we miss that, we, we have all sorts of larger consequences that have to do with water supply and ultimately more expensive rates for everybody. I understand the department is currently doing a review of the rate structure based on the council's request from a, a while back. Is that true? Uh, th that's right. Okay. Um, that, that is something which we're not discussing here today, but there's been a lot of blurring that this was somehow a redoing of all the, the water rates. This is, this is the first implementation of something we discussed before. That is happening, and I do want that to be as transparent and as open a process as possible. Now, the department has said that 85% of ratepayers, if they conserve 15%, will see their bills go down. Does this apply to customers of all kinds? I'll, I'll ask Jeff Peltola to respond to that. The 85% was specific to the uh, single family, uh, single family customers, um, and I can go through each one of the each one of the customer classes if you would like. Well, if, what I'd like you to do, either now or maybe perhaps when this comes to council on Friday, is to identify a typical commercial business, a single family and multifamily customer, and, and then for each, should, can you please describe their current tier one allotment, what their new tier one allotment would be what the department has done to make residents aware in each of those categories okay. and how the department has in the past or will in the future work with these customers to conserve water for each particular measure. One of the things I've heard loud and clear from the public is we all want to conserve and we all can conserve, but those of us who are already in the loop are all here and you know we represent millions of people who are not and not yet in that loop. In terms of some conservation <coughs> questions, our conservation incentives are the carrot that comes with this ordinance stick. And one of the most amazing statistics, obviously, that we always cite is that we're consuming the same amount of water today as we did 25 years ago, despite a million additional people. Um, I went through some of the department's past efforts to conserve water, um, but I think you know, it will be also instructive to continue to underline 
the programs we have that are incentives for customers. How are these programs communicated to customers and how successful you think that they've been? Um, and what education are you doing vis-a-vis um, -vis my earlier question? I understand that in, in response to questions raised by my colleagues, the department is now offering incentives for drought-friendly plants. Is that true as well? And how can customers access them? Yes, we, we've introduced a, a rebate program that, um, that was adopted by the Commission at the last meeting, and, uh, and it, is, it, is, it is undergoing the process of, uh, of refinement and then will be posted on the website and, uh, and, uh, and advertised. I think our neighborhood councils can be great communicators for that, the council offices as well, um, and looking at advertising. People are doing their planting right now in spring uh, where we have drought tolerant plants. It would be a good time. Obviously, the fall is another time to be looking at that as well. But uh, that's something that I bet most people don't know about, and, and we need to do more. I appreciate the department is doing specific targeted outreach to Lifeline <coughs> and low-income customers. Thank you for making this extra effort based on the council and the public's input. And additionally, I'd like to recognize the groundbreaking work to increase the supply of recycled water um, to help us reduce dependency. In terms of multifamily dwelling units, moving very quickly to that, they're another complicated issue. Um, we've asked how current rules and regulations around how and if landlords can pass through water consumption to tenants. The answer appears to be yes, but we're not quite sure how. Um, I don't know if you can report back anything else there, but in terms of working with LAHD to find a solution, especially for our rent, stabiliza rent, stabilized ordinance, rent stabilization ordinance units um, as well. Um, I authored, I believe, legislation that allows some pass-through to occur there, um, but whether we need to look at that or the carrot piece that I mentioned, if, if there is a reduction that they get uh, um, you know, some sort of money back that can be passed on to tenants. So tenants have some incentive until we can do individualized meters. Um, this is also an issue for condominiums, too, and homeowner uh, associations right now have the same disincentive because it's all paid by the HOA. So individual condo owners, you know, don't really have a particular incentive themselves to save um, because it's, it's shared by the rest of their fellow condo owners. But uh, any, any work on that, any, any uh, answers on whether that can be passed through under the RSO? Well, I think this is, as, uh, as uh, Jim McDaniel said, this is one of the things that we have to work on with, with uh, homeowners associations and, uh, and, uh, and apartment owners. You know, in, a, in an office building situation, there's a, there's a base that is set for the tenant, which in the first year would include uh, utility charges. Then after that, increases are passed through to the tenants of the office building. In apartment buildings, it doesn't work that way. Sometimes the, the lease will call for the landlord to pay the entirety of the water bill forever, and the landlord then would shoulder the, the increase and may not be able to pass it on. So we need to work through that kind of thing. We, we actually really need in the city to move forward towards sub-metering so that, so that we don't have this situation. If you think there are about four million of us living in the city, yet our water customers number, I think, close to 700,000. So those are, the, those are the master meters that we have, and we have to move towards sub-metering. But I, I'm, I'm personally concerned about this and want to make sure that we, uh, that we uh, sort it all out. Okay. Um, um, uh, th 30 quick more seconds, and then on, on that piece, uh, I mean, I, I think we have to look at that in the next, in this quarter as this comes in, that we have to get that ordinance changed to allow those uh, landlords to be able to pass that through, and then tenants will have incentives to save. I mean, we're not going to get um, individual meters in the next three months in right. the city of Los Angeles. Right. So. Now, now, let me just say, there is technology that enables the landlord to monitor how much water is being used, I believe, in each unit. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not a submeter, mm -hmm. but it's technology that allows the landlord to monitor. To only allow the landlord just to pass it through right. may, not, may not take account of the situation where there is one tenant right. that is to blame Absolutely. you know, disproportionately. And, and you don't want to punish one tenant because you have you know, exactly. ten tenants because you have one that's doing that as well. Well, I think you know, as aggressive as you can be with that submetering technology and any subsidies and working with our apartment owners, it's going to think I think is going to be very, very critical. Lastly, getting to transparency, the LA Times noted yesterday process issues remain within the department. This is an important policy. Um, better outreach still is needed. We appreciate that what you've done, but thank you for including Ms. Perry's suggestion that council be given 30 days instead of 15. Um, but I would like to move one other thing separately or suggest it since it's not. Um, Part of this, I would ask the department examine for this kind of change, putting something in the neighborhood council MOU that would require them to be notified in a set time period. So there'd be a set time period of the notification for the neighborhood councils on something like this, 15 days, 30 days in the future. We appreciate that that goes out, but sometimes that'll come a day or two before, which is why there aren't a lot of people that show up. And I know that's a frustration for the department. It's a greater frustration for the neighborhood council. Thank you. Hey, Ms. Brule. Thank you, and I won't repeat what my colleagues uh, ha have said here, and I think, uh, 
Uh, but I, I do want to, there are a couple things I want to just make sure everyone understands. If we do nothing, no. if we did nothing today, if we took no action today or Friday, what's the consequences of that? Um, I asked our, uh, our water system to run some numbers very, very quickly. Uh, if we do nothing, uh, we'll probably end up spending about $150 million more. That's and, and, and which would mean all customers, not just the 15% that are, I'll call them the water hogs. Exactly. It'll it would mean be, the whole 100%. It would be all of us. All of us would it be would paying more. It would be all more. of us. What, what this measure does is it, is, is it shields those who are already conserving, it shields those who are in low-income and lifeline categories, and it sends a powerful message to those who are at the very upper levels of Tier 1 and who exceed Tier 1 to cut back. Otherwise, they're going to see a financial impact. And these rates that to the increase in, in rates for those that are the water hogs will be those that not based on what you had last year or the year before, but based on what? You mean in terms of the tier structure? Well, the, the, the tier structure was Based on your size and your zone. Yeah, that's the tier structure was, was established back in the early 1990s, and the council has asked us to, to, to come back with suggestions as to how the structure could be could be revisited. And, uh, and what happened back then was that, was that 15 classifications were set. And, and uh, single family residential customers were actually given a tier, a tier one that was 125% of what their use was, depending on lot size, family size, uh, temperature zones, uh, and so on. This doesn't change that. This measure still keeps that same structure. All it does is it takes that upper ceiling of tier one and lowers it by 15 percent, thus, thus throwing that top 15 percent into a tier two rate. And then, and then it raises the tier two rate. And as someone who represents the Valley is concerned about the heat, uh, is that taken in consideration as well? Well, the, it's, it's okay. taken into, the, into consideration in the, in the basic structure of the, of the tiers. The people living in hotter zones uh, 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 get consideration. For that. So that's now, included in their calculation. So it, yes, it is, and, it is. And as you said, they can go on May 1st um, online, but now they could call the call center and find out exactly what their baseline is and what the 15% below that would yes. be. I, I had a gentleman, Bill Twynham, who was here the other day, and we, we were able to find out, in fact, that he was way below uh, the 15%. He will not be impacted at all um, <laughs> and, and uh, be able to share that. And, and he said, I didn't know that. I didn't, you know, and I think that's the education part that we talked with that Mr. Garcetti did as well as the importance of that. Um, just in, in, in closing, this is, um, as indicated by my colleagues, is something that the whole tiered process was adopted by the city council and, and discussed in the neighborhood councils and all of that a year and a half ago, was that, or just not the rates. Everything else mm -hmm. that's coming forward is was within the options that were put forward in that draft of the ordinance and draft of the water rate increase that we did at that time. Yes. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Let's, let's remember, we've been talking about water conservation now for about 20 months since the mayor first sounded the alarm about water conservation. Uh, the council uh, uh, enacted the water conservation ordinance, which has led to phase one, phase two, phase three last summer. And the ordinance that, uh, uh, the, that, that is giving rise to this measure was adopted by the board in October of 07 and then by the council, I think, in June of 08 or something like that. Okay. So uh, oh. within the last year that that and that process going forward. I think that, again, there is an um, importance of transparency and understanding and for education to get out before it happens. And I think the, the recommendations on the 30 days, I do agree that it should actually be changed to the ordinance um, and not just the policy, I think, as Ms. Perry has, has uh, gone forward because then there is some clear definition there um, and understanding with an acknowledgement that it's a declaration of an emergency. So that also means we have to act in a timely manner. And I think that um, there is no dispute that we do have a, a drought um, and unusual circumstances based also on the delta and some of the other things that have been expressed to us. Um, but I think, uh, as we often say, transparency, cooperation, and um, m making sure we have the information as, as early as possible is, is critical um, to making that determination um, as we go forward. In retrospect, I think 30 days would have been, would have been better because, because people wouldn't get this impression that this is getting something that's rushed through. 
but but what but we what we need to do is to get this done before the start of the summer. I think the point is that um, the emergency comes when MWD does takes the action that they did yesterday. But I think, as Ms. Hahn mentioned, we've kind of over the last year and a half known that there's a because we that's why we adopted the <coughs> ordinance. Were there time points in time that we should have acted? And I think that's something we want to see. There are there other things we could have done between at that point in time and today having to take this dramatic action for some um, in yeah, that. Let, let me just make this point very, very quickly. We have. The city of LA has, has responded very admirably across over the last 20 months or so, I think our across the board water usage is down something by 7%, somewhere between 5 and 7%. And that's just on the basis of the water conservation ordinance and calls for voluntary uh, conservation. We haven't even gone to phase three yet, and we're seeing we've seen that kind of response. The problem is, it's not enough. Right. It's not enough. We're, we're only getting 150,000 acre feet from our own exclusive aqueduct. From the Sacramento Delta, water supplies are getting cut by 80 percent. Met has come back, come out, and said, "You know what? You've got to cut 10 percent. Otherwise, you're going to be punished if you if you strain to that into that 10 percent." You know, and, you, and you distributed with the CFLs, I think, as I call a a, a water wheel um, that I know I received at home, and others would have that are um, a way of which you're educating people about how they can conserve. Right, and we're going to be distributing door hangers, so that neighbors can remind neighbors if they see that a sprinkler is running off during a, a rain event or is is going running amok or something, they can actually hang a, a very polite door hanger on the neighbor's door saying, you know what, this has happened, you may wish to, to do something about it. And, and, that's, and that's a great favor that would be done to the neighbor because this will save them money. You know, we need to start equating in people's minds the, the water with money getting spent because the truth is it's not a free commodity. Okay. Uh, Mr. Laban, just stop yeah, by. Uh, just stop by. Thank you very much. Uh, just want to say a few things and it's not in any order. Appeals process, okay, because some people are not going to know. Explain the appeals process, Jim McDaniel. Uh, if I get a bill and I feel it's wrong, how fast can you appeal it? Do you have to go downtown to get it appealed? What is the case? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, David Hotchkiss, Assistant City Attorney. Um, incorporated in the RAID ordinance are the rules of the Department of Water and Power Board of Commissioners. Um, those rules are maintained online, available for everyone to access. They're also published in hard copy. Rule 9 of the Board of Water Power Commissioner rules specifically provides that anyone who has any dispute whatsoever over their rate structure or their billing, their specific billing. For instance, if someone were concerned about the allocation of water in, in Tier 1 and they believed the department was not correctly interpreting their own rules, they could appeal to the Board of Water and Power Commissioners, it would go first to a, an administrative hearing officer who would hear the entire matter, make a formal recommendation to Where the board. The administrative officer who hears Located it? at the Department of Water and Power. Would there be one in the valley, one on the south side if necessary? Well, I, yeah, the, I would hope they would you look at that. So there is a process. There is so a process Mr. that, City that would go to the. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to mention that to put it on the record, the importance of an appeal process for this year. Also, Mr. Nahai, I, I really believe there should be a simple read on our water power bills, and I thank you for allowing us to send the city municipal bills there too, but at the same time, the simple read is, I don't know if people, if you walk down Hollywood Boulevard, Ventura Boulevard, or Sepulveda Boulevard, if you ask people what HFC means, they'll think household finance or something. <laughs> they will say acre feet or whatever the HFC is. I think there needs to have a discussion internally, what does it mean so you can get a simple read you're doing good, you're reducing, or you know, a, a little, yeah. like a meter, like a thermometer or something. Maybe design that if you could there. And also, um, I, I also think, and I tried to do this when I was at the Water and Power, but I wasn't there that long. Uh, get the weather people on television to be your water ambassadors. Uh, send a notice out, I know Joe uh, is here. Uh, Send a, uh, to all the news directors, we need, to, we need to get an army of people to be about this because it's real important as we go to this. And then also the issue of Owens Valley, are we getting, is all the water we're supposed to be getting coming and is there any kind of alteration we could do in Owens Valley? Because I don't want to see the people of Los Angeles suffer uh, in any way. I want to make sure we're getting our fair allotment 
even though it goes back a long time, it's real important that we look at that. We could talk later on that. You don't have to answer any of that. Thank you, Madam Chair, for letting me put those three things on. And lastly, I've reported before at Armstrong and uh, Silver Lake Boulevard, there's a sprinkler leaking right next to Silver Lake Reservoir. And I've called 367-1014 a number of times, and I saw it leak there this morning. So I, I, I just want to report that leak to you. Thank you. Okay. See you later. Got it. I don't okay. even know whose phone number that is. A uh, couple. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. A uh, couple of things. We are going to run out of time on item two, and uh, I'm going to have to calendar that for. I think it's going to be next Tuesday. April we'll continue 21st. it to next Tuesday uh, before council. Yeah, that's a regular meeting. Okay. Okay, that'll be our regular meeting. So we're going to have to move item two. Uh, I do have some speaker cards here. Uh, you can have a chance to speak again in council. Mr. Garcetti is going to have to leave, so that will break our quorum so that we will move. Ha if, if we proceed with speaking today from the public, uh, then there will be, uh, this will move out of committee without recommendation. Um, so if you would like to. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to vote. For it, it would just mean the public hearing didn't have a quorum, so we'd have the public hearing triggered in, in full council. Okay. I personally just, I'm not speaking for anybody else on the committee, but I'd rather vote on it rather than no recommendation. Okay. Uh, would you like to vote today? Sure. I mean, if that's, if. Yeah, what I can do is read the names of the individuals into the record, and then we can take our vote, and that'll be our formal record, and then you can come again on fr uh, Friday. Uh, and Dr. Williams, I know you come on a regular basis, as does Ms. Garcia. Uh, and we can do that if you wish to speak. All right, so just. I mean, I can get comments back from Well, let me, let me just read their names. Okay. For the, uh, I think this is Miguel Luna. Uh, you're here. And then I'm going to read your name in the record. We're not going to yeah, take. Yeah, I'll do it on Friday. Yeah, okay, great. Miguel Luna, I just want to make sure your name's right. Stephanie Taylor, uh, Todd Martin, Dr. Clyde Williams, Soledad Garcia, who's also submitted a letter for the record, and Barbara Moynihan Burke, uh, who I think is over there. Um, so what we'll do is, if you can, if you are able, uh, come back Friday to the full council meeting, and you can speak on the record then if you still feel the need. But your cards are a part of the official record for the committee today. And with that, again, uh, my request I'm sorry, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if there's any of the, even though we'll have another public hearing, there are some people, if they can't come on Friday, could we, I know Mr. Garcetti has to leave, and maybe Mr. Garcetti, we can hopefully get there soon and make the quorum. Hear those people who cannot be here on Friday? Well, I, I'd like to do that, but then, then we won't, we're going to lose quorum, so then our, we, there's no, we won't, basically, we won't be voting today. We'll just move it forward without I'm saying is we, we, we would go ahead and vote on it, and then just courtesy okay. to take their. All right. Uh, okay. See you later. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and um, vote. You know what? Actually, we then go ahead and vote. And vote. Yeah, but then if we, the public hearing doesn't matter. Then we'll still have a public hearing on Friday. I'm just saying there may be some people that we can at least hear their public comments. All right, well, just so you're clear, comments. if we vote now and you speak, uh, okay, that's fine. If you can come, okay, fine. It's just, you're just talking. It's not really impactful, but okay. All right, great. So the city attorney, uh, again, uh, my request. Uh, regarding the 30 days, and if you would like, I give you a draft of some language that I have here with my notes, and we can take a look at it before it comes back. And then the quarterly reports on the drought conditions, and my request to uh, have language that reflects uh, continuance, termination, and uh, how that ties in with the status of, status of shortage year rates, and so we can work on that language. Uh, anybody else have any things that they need to put on the record before we uh, go ahead and take this vote? Okay, great. All right, so. Uh, Second? Second. Second. All right. So that'll be the order. Now uh, you guys can leave, and then I'll just sit here and anybody I'll, wants I'll, to talk. I'll stay with you. There's just, I know a couple of mine that have been yeah, able to just test. It's fine. Um, so Soledad, why don't you come on up? And Stephanie, why don't you come up? Stephanie Taylor. Okay. I'll just call your names. Anybody who wants to talk now can talk now. It's just talk. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's M Miguel Luna. Do you want to come up now or you want to wait till Friday? Friday. Okay, great. All right, uh, Dr. Williams, you want to come up now or you want to come on Friday? Friday, okay. Uh, Todd Martin, do you want to come now or Friday? Is Todd here? Okay, Todd, let's come over there. And then Barbara. Friday, 
You want to come Friday? Okay, great. So we'll just hear from Todd and Soledad. Okay. And the rest of these, I'll make sure they get included for Friday. The committee council. council. So I Does that mean we get four minutes each? Four minutes? <laughs> no. How about three minutes? Two. Uh, like we do. We're in committee right now. <clears throat> Ms. Garcia, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my, the first sentence, LADWP did not observe the uh, MOU. Uh, it addressed, <clears throat> it has not addressed these issues that he said that were discussed at, at an outreach. There was no outreach. Um, if you count the, um, <clears throat> the Elysian Park, there were only 10 people there because there, were, there was really no access to the park. People who were handicapped were not able to go, and it was a violation of the Brown Act. I, I would like to only go into a couple of things that they said. Um, the object is that the neighborhood councils be provided the opportunity to, to have input and to be able to give input into the decision before the decisions are made, not after they're made. Outreach does not mean after the decisions are made and after everyone agrees to it, and then they go out and give all these good things. People don't know what the tiers are right now. I called and said, what is my average? They couldn't tell me. Um, the um, reports and that Mr. they Mr. discussed. You can ask them, the department to find it out for you. Go ahead, I beg your pardon. Go, go ahead, I'll say it after your time. Okay. Um, I just wanted to address some of these uh, sticky things that, that uh, Mr. Nehai uh, addressed. Um, the solutions, there are many solutions. We are, um, our people have been at, uh, at the conservation stage since the 70s. We are outstandingly good. Um, there is, so there's really no need for the tearing at this particular time. I would agree with Janice Hahn when she says, keep it as it is, and if people uh, go over, then charge them. But if you look at what we are doing, we're good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. But I will expand on Friday. Yeah, no, that's great. Okay, Mr. Martin. And if Martin. she could just give the address to the department, one of the department representatives, and they could find out for her, her tier, if you could do that, please. Ms. Garcia. Mr. Martin, go ahead. Ms. Perry, Ms. Grohl. My name is Todd Martin from the North Hollywood Neighborhood, the Midtown North Hollywood Neighborhood Council. I'm wondering if the fact that the community impact statement none submitted bothers anybody besides me. It strongly suggests that the issue has not been presented in the manner that the MOU specifies or that the city charter mandates. Uh, for us to present it to the stakeholders, get stakeholder feedback, get some information regarding what this tiering is all about or anything. Um, things come forward so quickly from the city council that it, it doesn't give us an opportunity to discuss or bring before the stakeholders who we represent any uh, valid information that uh, will enable them to make an intelligent decision. Uh, the Measure B was rushed from City Council to the voters. This tiering issue uh, is another example of it, and the fact that Mr. Nahai s specifies that it was already on the books and therefore did not need to be submitted to neighborhood councils is a specious argument that doesn't hold any water as far as I'm concerned. Community impact statements are necessary for the city council to make intelligent decisions, they're not forthcoming. And they're not forthcoming because we're not given the advance notice and time to consider them. In addition to which, the two minutes that we're granted before the committee here to make intelligent reasoned statements where the DWP is given 45 minutes to present their case really isn't fair. That's all I have to say. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Martin. And uh, as you know, we already voted on this item, and thank you for your comments. Uh, the rest of the cards for the people who filled them out, I put the gave, have given them to the clerk for Friday. Uh, item two will be continued to Tuesday morning. Uh, that will be April the 21st uh, in committee, and then it's, there's a placeholder for it to go into council. What time will that be on Tuesday morning? Uh, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Tuesday and morning. And then council. And then to council. So that's 9 a.m. Tuesday, April the 21st, and then on to council the same day, item two. Uh, will be heard then. So with that, uh, we've done the public comment uh, in the beginning, uh, and the meeting is the committee meetings now adjourned. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Sure.